CADMUS is a national 400-person uh, technical and strategic social good consultancy. Uh, we have an office here in Bethesda and another office over in Arlington in the Roslyn area. We are looking to do best-in-class work for our clients that meet their objectives uh, and that create social value, that improve people's lives, that protect the natural environment. The sustainable transportation benefits that we offer our employees, first and foremost, are a fantastic reflection of our overall uh, mission and core values. Here in Bethesda, we're two blocks from the Bethesda Metro stop. In Arlington, we may be three or four blocks from the Roslyn Metro stop. But that is a key consideration in the siting decisions that we make for all of our offices uh, across the country. Um, I take the Metro to work every day, um, but Cadmus provides $160 a month for transportation subsidies for um, employees who take public transit to work, um, which is great. There's a subsidy of about $100 a year. Uh, it just paid for a tune-up on this one. I could put it uh, towards a new bike or a helmet or anything else that would be uh, related to the bicycle commute. It's great. We've estimated that we have saved somewhere on the order of 375,000 to 400,000 vehicle miles traveled, which roughly translates to just shy of 20,000 gallons of gas saved annually. We don't want uh, stressed out, frustrated employees who have just spent 45 minutes on the Beltway. We want happy employees who are deeply engaged in our work, um, who are making choices they feel great about, and coming into work ready to do the important work that we do every day. Well, the mission of the Forest Service is to sustain the health, diversity, and productivity of the nation's forests and grasslands. So in many respects, teleworking and the design of the Yates Building is the embodiment of our mission. We had a building, a commercial lease, which was expiring. And at the same time, GSA, which owns this building, had planned for a major refurbishment. So if we could up our teleworking, we could make that last bit of square foot savings. That's where the idea of teleworking and hoteling space really began to take off. We looked at our current utilization a couple of years ago, it was about 11% of people teleworking, and we said, well, if we can encourage more teleworking, we can convert some of our office space to hoteling or teleworking working space. We're saving five to six million dollars just in lease space cost. I'm doing more conferencing uh, with individuals, um, doing more sharing as far as the meetings and so forth. Um, and then if I do need to have that quiet time and focus, I have that as well. So I think it's um, as productive as not more productive the time I spend here at home. So we have close to 50 percent of the employees on those agreements. We're going to save five million dollars we are uh, not going to need to furlough people as a result. And again, this, in, this is consistent with our mission. That resonates with people. Teleworking, I think, is an individual action that every employee and every agency that has employees can consider taking uh, to increase productivity, reduce environmental impact, reduce congestion and traffic flow into large urban areas like the nation's capital. We are consolidating our headquarters um, at this White Oak site. Currently we have a master plan approval of 8,889 employees that will be moving to this White Oak campus. So this does present some significant transportation challenges for us. Under the National Capital Planning Commission policies, we can only have two parking spaces here on the White Oak campus for every three employees. And when you have a good product, it's easy to market it. We have so many mechanisms in which we get the word out to our employees. We take a low-tech and a high-tech approach. We do the bulletin board to get the information out there, but we also use the value of the FDA intranet. Um, the town halls are a key element. Uh, we like to promote the commuter program in new employee orientation. and We try to get specific information for their own commute. That is where we excel in our program. Is we work with one individual at a time. It's just practical, person-to-person uh, -person contact. We identify potential vanpool coordinators 
And then we advertise for them as a van pool forming. It goes out into an email each morning to all the employees here on campus. Uh, once the employees learn uh, how beneficial a transit commute can be and how convenient it is, uh, it, it just catches fire. If a company has a good commuter program, they should be t uh, talking about it to the new employees. To get the word out that you can get out of your car and there's another way to get to this campus is absolutely critical. And they wouldn't have that information if it weren't for our marketing campaign. The county is the second largest uh, jurisdiction in Virginia and is experiencing ongoing growth. The suburban nature of the area presents special challenges. We've got a direct outreach program where we interface with our employers one-on-one -on -one, and I can honestly say that we have been successful in getting carpools and vanpools set up at a few of those sites. That was kind of a thrill for me to be able to actually send someone a list and then find out after the fact they contacted those people and were able to set something up and then saved um, however many miles and gas and um, commute time. It's not just one manner, one means of engagement, but having a variety of means which to engage the area employers is very important. We've used seminars and transportation fairs and employer site events. We recently did an event um, series called Fuel Your Life and we did a number of one-on-one -on -one ride matching events at employers um, out in uh, the territory. George Mason University, NVCC, we also had an event at Lockheed Martin and we were able to triple the number of ride matching requests that we got in the month of May. Behavioral change is not an easy thing to sell. And so the success that Holly and the team have had in promoting behavioral changes uh, is obviously um, proof positive that the program is worth its while. We know that the traffic in the Northern Virginia region ranks nationally. We had a number of major construction projects that were getting underway in the Northern Virginia area. Projects like the 495 Beltway Project, the 95395 project, as well as the Tyson's Corner Metro Rail expansion project. We were impacting and making commutes terrible for, for a lot of commuters, and so there was no way around that. Our main goal was to reach out to the um, employees working in these corridors and make sure um, that they were aware of the options and that they took advantage of the options. And that was our main goal of this was to just say, look, we're going to mess up their commute, but we're here to help also. We're going to help try to get you through it. And we formed an employer services team. So it was a sales team that was really targeted, really aggressive, really go, go, go um, to get out there. And this three-person team was the one that really hit the streets and knocked on all those doors and made those phone calls and worked with the, uh, with the employees and the management of all these, all these folks. There are a couple of very large employers in Tyson's Corner, or SAIC and Booz Allen Hamilton. Uh, we were able to establish really good contacts with those folks um, and work with their managers there to get not only them to implement some new programs or expand on some of their commuter assistance programs that they had, but also provide them information that they could pass along to their employees. Through these programs, we know that over one and a half million trips have been made using these transit options, which means that's that many fewer cars that are traveling on these roads. Any way that we can work to reduce the demand on our corridors and, and our roads is, a, is important to us, both as we're in construction and for the future as well.